Hi everyone, I am Nalini Bengedi Sapilai. Today we are going to focus on writing. Present relations within a sentence, between sentences and between paragraphs. What is sentence and paragraph? A sentence is a statement, while a paragraph is an extension of what is being exactly stated. A paragraph is kind of like a category but added with subcategories. A sentence is a train of thought. Meanwhile, a paragraph is an extension of that thought. If your mind resorts to a totally new thought, you must start a new paragraph. Then, you must expand upon that new thought. When we are writing an essay, there will be a few paragraphs. And what are those paragraphs is about? A paragraph is a group of logical sentences linked in meaning. Paragraphs are composed by sentences. They are ordered by writers and they range from simple sentences to a very complex ones. A paragraph also contains a series of sentences developing one point. It contains the topic sentence called a headline. This topic sentence may be developed by giving examples, giving details, or by telling an incident. When you're writing a paragraph or an essay, you must remember about the unity. Unity must be kept alive throughout the paragraph. Every sentence in a paragraph should support the main idea expressed in the topic sentence. While concluding, restate the topic sentence in different words. The idea in a paragraph should have clear and logical relation to each other. Use appropriate conjunctions to link the sentences. How to write a paragraph? When presented with a question, first analyze it by identifying the keywords in it and clarify all the key terms. Next, Decide your stand for your essay. A stand is where you challenge the statement presented to you and construct a viewpoint outlining the degree to which you are in agreement or disagreement with the question, or if you are sitting on the fence, which means you are partial agreement. It is through your stand that your points of discussion will be further detailed and your topic sentences are formed. Points to remember when you are deciding your stand. Do not explicitly say I agree or I disagree or I partially agree or disagree. Rather, demonstrate how you feel and thus how you are going to write by highlighting your opinion of the stand. Use your stand as an umbrella from which your body paragraph ideas fall under. Next is your topic sentence. Topic sentence is to settle on what points to make in your body paragraph and then further develop it. Topic sentences outline the content you will be presenting the particular body paragraphs. A good topic sentence should detail an idea that can be drawn from your stand. So, you need to ensure your topic sentence clearly indicates what you will discuss in your paragraph. Next, check to make sure your topic sentence is an idea that stems from your stand. And when you are planning essay, writing down a list of your topic sentence is an excellent way to check that your argument flows well from one point to the next. After you have come up with your topic sentence, you need supporting details to support your topic sentence. And supporting details will be containing facts, statements, examples, specifics which guide us to full understanding of the main idea. They clarify, illuminate, explain, describe, expand and illustrate the main idea and it, that is known as supporting details. Evidence Okay, just now when you are writing a supporting detail, it includes evidence as well. So you can either in integrate the evidence in your supporting details or you just can give an evidence as it is. 
evidence backups your topic sentence. It shows why do you believe what you have written in your topic sentence. Evidence can be from personal experiences or any evidence from external sources that you have read and others as well. Do not forget about linkers. What are linkers here? Linkers help your argument to flow more effectively. They help the reader understand how the parts of your argument are connected. Without these linkers or transitional phrase, the connection between sentences and paragraph can still be inferred, but much less clearer. Below are some terms that are often helpful for signaling relationships among ideas. For an essay of like chronology, so you can use linkers like before, next, earlier, later, during, after, meanwhile, while, until, then, first, second. To show comparison, you can use linkers like also, similarly, likewise, in the same way, or in the same manner. To show contrast, you can use however, but, in contrast, still, yet, nevertheless, even though, or although. To show clarity, you can give like for example, for instance, or in other words. To show continuation, you can use like and, also, moreover, additionally, furthermore, another, and two. And as for consequences, as a result, therefore, for this reason, thus, consequently, these are the linkers that can be used. And finally, would be your conclusion. In conclusion, you can use linkers like in conclusion, in summary, or to sum up. Finally, is the conclusion or the concluding paragraph. Conclusion paragraph is also very important because it is an impression of what you will leave with your reader. It wraps up your essay. It demonstrates to the reader that you accomplish what you set out to do. It shows how you have proved your thesis and also it provides the reader with a sense of closure on the topic. Well, now let's take a look at some examples of introductory paragraph, body paragraph and concluding paragraphs. Okay, now let's take a look at an introductory paragraph of an essay entitled The Dangers of Dance. Around the world, there are hundreds of dams of different sizes. Dams are used for irrigation, food defences, water supply and hydroelectric power. Despite these positive elements, however, there are also many bad elements related to dams. So, when you look at these sentences here, it uses counter-argument to make lead into a clear stand, which is agreeing that the dangers of dam here. And the linkers provided here is despite, despite these positive elements. It shows that there are positive elements, but, okay, so there's also however. However here, they are showing there are also many bad elements related to dams. Okay, continue. Dams have a negative global impact because they eat up valuable land resources, ruin wildlife habitats and endangered species and creating damages, damaging greenhouse gases. So this would be the thesis statement. In this thesis statement, it includes three main arguments, which will in turn become three body paragraphs. Now let's take a look at first body paragraph. Firstly, dams take up areas of land rich with valuable resources. So this would be the main idea of the first body paragraph and it relates to the thesis statement. Dams requires large areas of land as flood plains for the reservoir of water. Man-made lakes are created this way often at the cost of valuable farmland 
livable land and plentiful forests. Although there are enjoyable aspects of man-made lakes, these lakes are not always practical. In Sarawak, the main reason for the dam's construction in a potential 320 km economic development region promises to bring employment opportunities and infrastructure development for the state, which suffers from below average levels of employment and income. However, the influx of smelters and refiners will generate mountains of waste and pollution and people will also lose income due to a loss of exportable materials. So you can see that the first argument here, it presents the counter opinion and incorporates the use of research to back up argument. This is the concluding paragraph of the essay. Today, society is learning of the dangers that come with hydroelectric dams. As alternatives, solar and wind power are both green energy sources that have no foreseeable dangers. It is hopeful that these sources can come into use in the future to replace the need for dams. So in the conclusion here, it offers a possible solution to the problems. Now let's take a look at another example of different essay. If you look at this body paragraph, the topic sentence given here, it states the main idea of the paragraph. So the topic sentence given here is, the most important problem in our city is its poor public transportation. Thousands of residents rely on the city's buses and taxis to travel throughout this large city, while the metro transportation systems daily schedules are totally unreliable. A bus or taxi that should arrive at 7.45 may not arrive until 8 or later. Moreover, it is not unusual for a bus driver to pass up groups of people waiting for the bus because he wants to make up for lost time. Unfortunately, people often end up going to work late or missing important appointments. So these are the supporting sentences for the topic sentence, which is the problem in our city, poor public transportation. So it's being supported by why it happened and what are the problems occur due to that. As for the concluding sentence here, in order for people to get to their destinations on time, people must allow for waiting time at the bus and taxi stops. Let's take a look at another example. There are several possible reasons why my father is in excellent health even though he is over 70 years of age. So that is the topic sentence which states the main idea of the paragraph. The main idea here is the reason my father is in excellent health even though he is over 70 years of age. So the supporting sentences given here. First, he is in, in excellent condition because he has stopped smoking cigarettes. He quits smoking cigarettes since whenever he climbs stairs, he would quickly stop several times and cough loudly. He also has good health as a result of stopping eating the wrong kinds of foods. For example, whereas before he would eat fatty red meat and deep fried dishes several times a week. Nowadays, he seldom does so. He is also in good physical shape for the exercises a lot. He swims three times a week at the local gym and on sunny days, he prefers to walk home rather than take the bus. So 
you can see that all those points given are the reasons to support why my father is in excellent health even though he is over 70 years of age. As for the conclusion, in conclusion, my father is in better shape than some of his children are. Well, that's all for today. Thank you and see you again in next lesson.